Thanks for being here this evening. My name is Kevin Conover, and you're listening to Educate for Life. We're on podcast. We're also on KPraise 12, 10 a.m. If you're local here in Southern California and FM 106.1 in North County. Last week, I interviewed Dan Biddle. And uh, if you haven't seen the movie, The Ark and the Darkness uh, just came out last week. Fantastic. That's what we talked about with Dan last week. And uh, incredible movie uh, going through all the scientific evidence for the truth of the flood. And uh, if you didn't get to see it, because uh, it was sold out in many theaters around the country, it's got a, It's going to be replaying on April 1st. So you have a chance to check it out then and um, go look at it. But one of the uh, uh, experts who was in the movie, we have with us this evening, his name is Dr. Carl Werner. And just a little bit about him before uh, we, we hop in here. We're going to be talking about the evolutionary frauds all over the world, as well as just touching on actual living fossils, living evolutionary, quote, evolutionary fossils. Um, he received his undergraduate, undergraduate degree in biology with distinction at the University of Missouri, received his doctoral degree in medicine at the age of 23. Formerly, he was an adjunct assistant professor in the Department of Surgery at St. Louis University. He's the author of Evolution, the Grand Experiment book series and the executive producer of Evolution, the Grand Experiment video series which has now played on seven television networks in 70 countries. Dr. Werner, thanks so much for being here this evening. Oh, it's great to be with you, Kevin. Thank you for the invite, huh? Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm so glad that you agreed to come on and talk about um, what you've been doing. This is incredible. Uh, you have on your uh, social media on X, it says, traveling the globe to answer one simple question, is evolution true or is it not? 15 countries, six continents, 250,000 miles. Um, take us back to the beginning. Um, this is an incredible journey you've been on. And for a lot of people, they'd be like, there's no way I'm going to travel all over the world trying to figure this out. What drove you to decide to go on this mission to figure out whether evolution is true or not? You know, I grew up in a good family. My parents were awesome, but the church I went to wasn't a Bible-believing you know, uh, where they emphasize this, the truth of the Bible. And when I got to college, um, I just morphed away from my parents' way of thinking and from religion because my professors were teaching me that evolution was true. It, it seemed logical, plausible, all that. And um, I was there, by the way, on a full ride science scholarship, which is very unusual to have a full ride science scholarship um, I had done research at the University of Missouri while in high school. When I was in high school, I had this animal, my own animal lab to show you how much of a science geek I was. Anyway, um, during my sophomore year of, of college, which was also my second year of medical school, because I was accepted to this six year medical school where you go to both medical school and college at the same time, a friend asked me out for dinner on a Sunday night and was at Minsky's Pizza Parlor in Kansas City on uh, Main Street there. And he asked me three questions that turned me around and put me on this quest and landed me in this chair tonight. And those three questions were, Carl, you believe in the natural origin of the universe? Yes. Well, how did matter come about? How do atoms come about? Because matter doesn't form naturally. Now this doesn't probably excite you or your audience, but this is like a stunning question for me because it basically decimated the idea that the universe could have formed naturally. And then he said the second, it was a scientific discussion. He said, Carl, you believe in the origin of life in the primordial soup where before this, nothing was living, just chemicals in the primordial soup, lightning struck and whatever, and the first living cell began. You, how could that be since you know as well as I, and I did, that DNA, proteins, the large molecules within the cell, DNA, proteins, enzymes, do not form, cannot form under any, any, any circumstance. And I never thought about it. It's like, yeah, how could life begin? Because DNA is in every living thing and proteins are in every living things and enzymes are in every living thing. How could life begin? And then the third question is, Carl, how is it possible that evolution is true, given the fact that we've collected, and now the number is 1 billion, the museums have collected 1 billion fossils, 1,000 museums with a million fossils each approximately, and yet 
each of the animal groups, like the phyla, like, you know, the uh, arthropods or the starfish kind or whatever, each family just shows up. No evolutionary history. It just show up. How is that possible, given the fact that the fossil record is so rich? You can't blame it on a poor fossil record. And, you know, I sat there. I didn't tip my tip my hand and tell them that I'm, you, you got me. I just pretend like, mm -hmm, you know, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. But it bothered me. It bothered me to the core. I was like, here I am on a science scholarship. I can't even ask, answer the most basic questions about what I believe. And you know what? Intellectually, I knew his arguments were so powerful, those three questions, that all the inf other information that I believed in evolution that I just quickly thought through, it, it, it couldn't stand up to those three questions. And so, and so at that point, just real quickly, I decided that evolution isn't true, but I don't know, I don't know how that's possible. You know, how, mm -hmm. how could you explain the fossil record? How could you explain the layers? How could you explain dinosaurs? How could you explain the millions of years? And I just went then on an 18 year uh, quest the first 18 years, that was from when I was 19 years old to whatever, 37 years old, just reading, 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 reading. And I couldn't solve, couldn't answer a single question. And then I talked my wife into going on a one year, uh, you know, expedition, you know, on our free time, on our vacations that we go out yeah. and interview <laughs> scientists one year. And that was in 1997. And it just, it took time. It just took time to get to the bottom of each subject that I examined. And at the end of it, I don't believe in evolution. In fact, I'm so sure of it. I just want to shout from the housetops, you know, each of these areas of naturalism, like the Big Bang, they couldn't have occurred, origin of life couldn't have occurred, the fossil record doesn't support it. And now this latest, latest piece, uh, which we're going to talk about later, I guess, is that I have uncovered 150 frauds in the field of human evolution. So it was just an honest, I got to get to the bottom of this and uh, I'll just use my own time, my own dime. Nobody would support me to try to do this. You know, it, you know I was a physician, you know, who's going to help a physician look into this? Who's going to pay for his way? Who's going to help him make a television show? nothing so i was like debbie we just got to do this we'll just we'll just figure it out let's just get a camera let's figure it out you know and there we go and uh wow we, we became very good videographers we became very good filmmakers we became very good photographers we we became very good producers uh you know with a lot of mistakes at the beginning but that's the unimportant part the important part was that we were accumulating these facts that are spread all over that you have to accumulate enough of them and put them together and as like oh there's the answer you know but it, it, you can't do it in one day one week one book reading books i don't think is very successful in getting to the bottom of some of these hard questions because there's hidden facts and so it just just that that's my life that's carl warner's life in 30 seconds <laughs> that is that is absolutely phenomenal and um, I have a, a bunch of questions. Well, the first question is, is who was that guy that asked you those questions? Um, did you ever, do you, are you still in touch with that uh, gentleman? No, you know, and that was it. That was it. And, you know, he planted a seed and went on and I, we're, we're just, I've never followed up with him, you know, and it's kind of weird. He did a, a life changing event in my life. And, you know, it was just, Hey, have you thought about this and bye? <laughs> wow, that is that is amazing how God works. I mean, that's encouraging because you know you plant a few seeds and uh, you have no idea what God is going to do with that. So yeah. that that's encouraging in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but then my other question is is you know I, I'm I've studied creation significantly, not not anywhere near the level you have, but it's interesting to me because you're saying that a lot of these frauds people are completely unaware of even people that are have been are scientific creationists who have been studying this sort of thing you said it's not the kind of thing you can just get out of a book i'm really curious what are some of these frauds you're referring to that people just aren't aware of that you were able to discover by traveling around the world and uncovering things that maybe have never been uncovered before well 
the first fraud that we documented, and this is in the episode one of our video series, was that the scientists at National Geographic knew that when they published an article uh, about a new dinosaur bird, you know, they think that dinosaurs evolved into birds. They knew that it was a fake and they printed it anyway. That was in the dinosaur to bird evolution story in episode one. And the reason I know that it was when we interviewed the scientist who both of these are evolutionists. We interviewed the evolutionist at uh, University of Texas, I think it was. And he had done the CAT scan on this fossil. I think it was called Archaeoraptor or something like that. And uh, he told him, the National Geographic scientist, hey, this is a very problematic fossil. There's like 27 sources to this fossil. There's bones from this, there's bones from this, there's bones from this, there's rocks from this, rocks from this. They've all been glued, to gl glued together cleverly. Now, this isn't a creation of saying this. This is the evolution scientist saying this. And he had the CAT scan. He showed us the CAT scans, which you can see on episode one. And see, this is a problem. I, anybody could be fooled by these frauds in, in the bird to, dinosaur to bird evolution. I was fooled by two of them. Anybody could make that mistake. But see, he was told, the National Geographic scientist was told, this is a fake. Here's the CAT scans, and he printed it anyway. That's one. Wow. <laughs> why? Now, why would I'm sure people are thinking, you know, they're thinking, why would somebody do that? Why would he go ahead and continue to print it if he knew it was fraudulent? He's a damn fool. Um, no, uh, excuse me. No, uh, he, he, <laughs> no, uh, excuse my French, but no, he was he was a foolish. But here's what goes on. When you have a big discovery, there is prestige and money coming your way. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. part of you thinks it, you're not gonna get caught or it's not gonna be exposed. And he thought, the guy from National Geographic thought, nobody will come to interview the CAT scan man, which I did. <laughs> so, you know, he, he, he didn't think it through. It was just very poor judgment, but that was just one fraud but the majority of frauds are in the human evolution field, Kevin. They're, Debbie and I on our travels, this is hard to believe, and I'd like to show you some pictures if I could, but yeah, we documented, listen to this number, 150 frauds, not mistakes, but where the scientists, human evolution scientists fraudulent. Fraudulent means he knowingly told this incorrect story and he knew that it was misleading the public. He knew it was wrong, but he did it anyway. Mistake is I'm, he's just a dumb scientist. He takes a pig's tooth and calls it an ape man. That's just, that's just dumb. But I'm not talking dumb and I'm not talking about overzealous. I'm talking 150 instances where they knew the, what they were portraying, either in the eight-man fossil, their eight-man diagram, their eight-man chart, whatever, they knew it was fraud, but they printed it anyway. I, 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 I find that number astounding, astounding. I do, I do too. I, and I'm sure anybody who's a skeptic or is not a Christian, you know, a creationist, is listening and thinking, like, there's no way. But you have hard evidence that this is the case? <laughs> yeah, and I see I love skeptics because I am the worst skeptic. I'm the doubting Thomas of all doubting Thomases. And I love skeptics and I love atheist skeptics because that is the only way you're going to get to the truth. And you should be questioning me totally. But I'm just going to say, I'm going to show you a few tonight. I can't show you the 150. But if you watch in our eight part video series, if you watch episodes five, six, seven, and eight, four 50 minute episodes, we go through all 150 frauds, number by number and by number and by number in a fast kind of fun way. But we show that it's clearly fraud, that the scientists are lying, that they're totally misrepresenting, they're altering the fossils. 150, like one episode, we had to divide the episodes up by continent. There were so many. So it's like, okay, 
episode five is human evolution frauds carried out by scientists working in North and South America. Then episode six is human evolution frauds carried out by scientists working in Africa, like the leakies, the Tobiases, the darts, et cetera. The episode seven is human evolution fraud carried out by scientists working in Europe. And that would be like uh, Tumai and Michel Brunet and um, just Neanderthal man, just it goes on and on and on and on. And then the last episode is just devoted to this, this last most, most prominent ape man that's out there now called Tumai. And it was fraud, fraud, fraud. It was fraud, fraud, fraud. And I know if you don't believe me, you just have to at least spend three bucks and go watch my video on demand. And I don't need your money, by the way. I'm this, I, I've lost so much money on this thing. I don't need your money. I'm fine. I don't need to sell books or anything like that. That's not my motivation. But just spend three bucks, the price of a hamburger, and watch episode eight. Start with the last show, and it kind of summarizes the frauds. And then work your way backwards, and they're all there. And it's on camera with the scientists admitting the fraud or accusing their colleagues of fraud. It's ridiculous. And all this is a new story, by the way. <laughs> no, nobody knows this story. Well, I'll probably, I'll just say before the creation community, all we knew about was Piltdown Man. That was, you know, the scientist at the Natural History Museum in London. He made that ape man yeah. up and planted it. Everyone knows that one. And people have a sense that there was a scientist called Heckel in, in Germany in the 1890s who made up fraudulent drawings. But yeah. that was just two. And so I got all these, I got all these frauds and they're all documented to the, to the nth degree. You know? Wow. Uh, I, this is, uh, you know, I, I'm sold. I'm, I, I, I gotta, I gotta watch these. <laughs> <laughs> um, Dr. Dr. Werner is my guest this evening and um, thegrandexperiment.com. And uh, the grand experiment is referring to his attempt to determine whether or not evolution was actually true. And uh, boy, he has really uh, done a job. And uh, Dr. Werner, so, so these people that you're exposing essentially, um, are they concerned? I mean, are they concerned about this information getting out that there's all this fraud taking place? It depends. It, I've had some weird reactions. Um, the ones who are accused are generally silent. And the ones who are vindicated, see, because a lot of these frauds also involved a, um, an evolution scientist that was hurt by the fraud, you know, because oh. of either a lie or misrepresentation. And like, I had this one scientist, I'm not going to tell you who it is, he's communicating with me. I'm like, Dude, I can't believe you're you're writing to me like I'm your friend. You're an evolution scientist, and he he is so glad that the story finally got set straight. And you know that scientist with National Geographic, the bird, the dinosaur, a uh, dinosaur to bird guy. Yeah, he had been he had been um, maligned because the scientist who did the fraud said I was never told that he the cat scan was wrong, and that was a lie. And so the guy that did the CAT scan was more than happy. He didn't care who it was, just get my side of the story out. And so, no, I don't know. Nobody's like jumping at my jugular vein. Let's just put it that way. I, I, I don't know why I'm immune, but it's all been fine. You know, it's truth is truth. Wow, that's great. Well, that, this is really exciting. So let's get into a few of these so that uh, our listeners can uh, check this out. Okay, I'm going to let you choose the first one. We can either choose the classic diagram where a uh, ape goes to a human, you know, with the 14 intermediate animals. That's one. Mm -hmm. I'll start there. Or we can start with the latest ape man that's just been discovered that's in on display in all the museums called Tumai. So you get to choose, and I'll pull up the screen. Which one do you choose? Okay, let's start with Tumai. That sounds, uh, Tumai starts, it sounds interesting. Okay, can you see that um, screen, my screen? Yep, I can. I can see it. Yep. So here, Tumai is, the Tumai skull is found in 2002 and appeared, it's so big, it appeared on nature, on the cover of nature, and it appeared on the cover of time. We interviewed the scientist who discovered it. His name is Michel Brunet. He lives in Paris. And he said this was the oldest ape man 
seven million years old. And he knew that it was seven million years old because he it was dug out of rock. I'm telling you all the important facts, so pay attention. It was seven million years old because it was dug out of rock and the rock was dated seven million years old. Got it? And then he said the spinal cord hole on the bottom of the skull where the spinal cord enters, that small hole here called the frame and magnum, was not in the ape position, but it was more towards the center in the human position. And lastly, he said, we really are pretty sure it walked upright, but too bad we don't have any other bones of this ape man. So we're just gonna go with the skull. And everything I just said was a lie. <laughs> now, <laughs> and how do I know this? Because we interviewed the scientist he maligned. And it, we actually interviewed the scientist who actually was there when it was found. The scientist promoting it wasn't even there. But he, he claimed it as, you know, it was his dig site, so it was his fossil. So that's what the skull looks like. It's on display in every large museum today. And all the skulls are wrong. Here is the day of discovery, maybe an hour or two after it was discovered. And this is how it was found. The skull was laying on top of sand. It was not buried in rock and they couldn't date the rock. In Chad, where this fossil was found in the Jurab Desert, all, um, most of the fossils that are found are just laying on top of the sand. And you have no idea how they got there. They could have got there in the flash flooding in the wet season. It could have been wind. They have these big wind storms. They could have been moved by animals, et cetera, et cetera. He did not, quote, un dig it out of the ground. It was not dug out of the ground. It was laying on sand. So that was the first lie. The second lie, and thank goodness the doctor that was actually there took all these photographs. And thank goodness he was maligned because we actually get the real story. He said there was no other bone of this animal found there, no other you know, primate, but this bone happened to be there. And it's a primate femur. And it looks like a chimp femur. And he kept this secret for 17 years. He, he wrote in the science journals, there was no other extremity, there was no extremity bones, there was no other bones except the jaw and the skull, just the head. And yet this picture shows, here's a femur. Now, why would he not want to bring this femur to light? I'll show you. Here is a modern chimp uh, femur I took photographs of. And this is, the, this is one bone shown in four different views. You get that. So the, the chimp is just turning, you know, and then here's that one bone that was out there. It just shot from four different angles. And this bone, when you lay it over the chimpanzee femur, it's, <laughs> oh, wow. It's like, oh, wow. And yet no museum has this femur on display next to the skull. This should be the front and center. Like you're saying, Dr. Brunet, who, who's promoting this fossil, you're saying this animal walked upright because of the skull shape, but yet you have a chimpanzee femur, chimpanzee-like femur that was found right next to it, and chimpanzees walk on all fours. So why did you hide it? Why did you not bring this out? I mean, that, that's, that's another fraud, okay? That's two frauds, and we got more to go. Remember I told you that he said the spinal cord hole was in the ape position, I mean, in the human position. Here's the spinal yeah. cord hole, and here's the spinal cord hole. Here's the CAT scan image. Here's the image that they created. And you'll notice that there is white bone missing on his newly recreated model. See, he took the cat, he took the, the original fossil and did a CAT scan, and then he moved the bones around and he was able to move the hole, the frame and magnum, because there was bone missing. It allowed him to move this bone. I'm gonna show you in just a second. what. And here's the scientist, Michelle Bernay, who, who did these frauds, okay? Here is how you get to, to form an ape man. You got a gorilla skull here. You see the frame and magnums in the back of the skull. Mm -hmm. You got a human, it's more towards the center. And when they found this skull, it was all distorted. You can see it's distorted because the teeth line up with the center of the frame and magnum. See that? The teeth, the teeth should be over here to the side, but yep. the whole skull is screwed up. And what he did is that he deconstructed this 
and he had a choice on this on the frame and magnum see the frame and magnum's even distorted he had a choice yeah. with this bone here now this bone here in red is this bone here you see that that's yep. that's the front of the frame and magnum he had a choice he could have turned this side down and then he would have had an ape skull in other words, he could have, when he took all the part pieces apart and put them together, he could have just moved this down and he would have had it, it would have been in this position down here. But yeah. instead, he took this side and moved it up. Do you see that? Yep, I and, see it, yep. And so he could move, he could move the frame and magnum. And by the way, he's the second scientist in Paris that's done this. The other one was the Neanderthal scientist in 1908, uh, Marcel and Boulle. So he had good teacher uh, how to be do a fraud like this. And um, he would not allow his colleagues and other colleagues and myself, a film company, which he didn't realize I was questioning evolution. He would not let me see the CAT scan. He would not let me have photographs of the original fossils. He would not let me photograph the, fo the, the fossil reconstruction. He, kept, he keeps it all hidden because he knows as soon as they, everyone could get a hold of this, they'd say, you move this. <laughs> so that's yeah. one scientist, that's four frauds, and um, that is nauseating. I find that nauseating. Uh, and I, I do too. That's, that's unreal. It's uh, unreal. I, and Kevin, I'm saying that was four. I still have 146 to go, and they're all as crazy as that. And the only reason... I was able to get this is because we got into the museums, we got into the scientists, they didn't realize that we weren't evolutionists, so that, but that shouldn't matter, they should tell you the same story. And, yeah. they, and they told us these stories, and it's just one after another, after another, that makes, it, 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 I conclude that the theory of evolution, which had been hanging on to human evolution, all the other proofs have really kind of fallen apart. You know, whale evolution, dinosaur to bird, all these other proofs have fallen apart. The origin of the universe, origin of life, all of it doesn't work. The fossil record, you know, but they've been all hanging on to human evolution as well, it's true. All of evolution, all of naturalism is true. But now with 150 frauds that we uncovered, are, are exposed. Plus, there's probably another 150 that we didn't find out about because most scientists do a pretty good job on their frauds and don't admit it. Some of these yeah. guys did. Yeah. So that's another 150. So this would mean that there's hundreds and hundreds of frauds, plus there's hundreds and hundreds of mistakes. There's, uh, let's see, uh, 232 eight men have been overturned, you know, plus there's 41,000 eight man tools that have been overturned by the evolution scientists. And so now I say we have reached the tipping point. Everyone should get up on the rooftop tonight and shout. It's over. <laughs> the theory yeah, of evolution yeah. is over. Th this is it. Th th if this doesn't convince or cause pause for the most serious evolution scientists or atheists, um, well, I don't think I could ever you know, crack that nut, you know, but this is just, it, it, it actually nauseates me when I discuss this because I just like, it's maddening that someone would take that, that level of authority. You trust your doctor, you trust your scientist, you trust, I don't know, you don't trust the politicians, but, but you know, you trust these guys and you just assume that since he's a scientist, he's going to tell you the truth. And now, man, this field is blown out of the water. Well, it's crazy. It's it's almost as if there's a, a massive amount of exposure take, taking place where um, all the fraud across the board is being exposed. I mean, we're dealing with what happened with COVID. We're dealing with what happened all all throughout, um, you know, the media and everything else, it, the government, everything. It's crazy. It's almost as if there's just this grand uncovering. And how long ago did you did you finish your this project? How long ago was that completed? So I'm going to tell a story on myself. Uh, you should never tell yourself, make yourself look bad, but I'm going to tell you a story that's so bad, show you how ignorant I am. So we filmed from 1997 on this human evolution project till present, you know, last year. And during mm -hmm. that time, I wrote up um, the book series that went along with it. Excuse me just a second. I wrote up 
two books, and I wrote up this book called Untold Stories of Human Evolution. Now, there's a point in this story, so listen tight, yeah, listen carefully. So this book covers the eight men, the five eight men that were promoted by 40 evolution scientists that were made out of regular non-primate animals like dolphin bones, they changed them into eight men, pig bones, pig teeth, um, donkey skulls, uh, dog bones, cat bones, all these kind of bones were created in, made into an ape man. And that was my first book. Okay. Now I still hadn't discovered the fraud yet. I noticed there was a few frauds in this book, but I wrote it up. It just came out this year. You know, okay. So then I'm writing up the second book. <laughs> I shouldn't be telling you this, but anyway, I wrote up the second book and this one is called nine categories of overturned ape men. And as a scientist, I'm thinking, okay, there's these 232 ape men that have been overturned. I mean, they're, they're not ape men. What were they, you know? And so I like, how do you attack something like that? Okay, so I decided, oh, I'll just divide them into categories. And it came up that the categories were things like, some of these ape men were made out of monkey bones, you know, the little guys. And some of them were made out of clearly ape bones. And some of them were made out of humans that were recently buried. They, the bones weren't even fossilized. And some of them were made up of the non-primate mammals. Some of them were made up by altering fossils. One was made up by a reptile bone, et cetera, et cetera. So that was what I did. And so about two years ago, as I'm finishing up this book, and I'm still waiting for the publisher, why don't you help me and publish these things? And there was a there was a master plan coming from above, and I didn't I didn't get what was going on, and so as I'm writing up the back cover of this book, the second book, I'm all done, and I wrote, started to write out this sentence. I said during the filming of this uh, and the create you know the interviews during this book series, uh, several instances of fraud were noted, and I thought to myself. Carl, this is a back cover. That's kind of a weak statement. What do you mean several? Okay, how many were frauds? <laughs> how many frauds did you see? Document. And I said, well, I have to count them up. And I started going, okay, well, there was that, that guy. Yeah, there was one there. Yeah, there was that guy. There was 10 there. Yeah, there was that guy. It was uh, 35 with Dr. Dart. And yeah, there was Dr. Bull. And it just kept going. And, and I kept going. And I kept going. And I was like, oh my gosh, this just jumped off the page just like my Living Fossils book. It just jumped, once you ask the right question, it just jumps off the page. And this jumping off the page was, there's frauds everywhere. I didn't realize it till about two years ago. And I'm still waiting for the publisher to, you know, to print the book. And so then, even though the books are done and the, the two videos are done, I said, shoot, I'm gonna have to go back and make four more videos about the fraud. So we added the four videos about the fraud. And so, yeah. That, that that's that's how stupid I was. I missed it all, and it would just almost snuck underneath me. And if God hadn't stopped the project at the publisher level, I would have just, you know, published and never have caught it. You know. Oh well, that's that's huge. I mean, the amount of fraud is just amazing. Um, so so, Doctor Warner, um, you also reference in your series in the Grand Experiment series you reference living fossils also. Um, just tell us a little bit about that for our guests, for our listeners who are interested in um, that aspect of you know, the evolutionary claims. Well, the theory of evolution says that animals changed over time. And the theory of evolution always promotes the idea that during the time of the dinosaurs, the animals were strange and unusual. And if you go to a museum display today anywhere in the world and i've been i've seen them all you know they just show you the dinosaurs and strange and unusual animals with the dinosaurs and i this was back uh, 20 years ago i made this conjecture as a scientist you know like okay if evolution isn't true and i had a lot of evidence for that i said that would mean that creation is true if creation is true that means that all the animals were created at once and then they got mixed together in a big washing machine called the Noah's Flood. So there'd have to be lots of human, um, modern animals found next to dinosaurs. And so, and I knew of none. And we started going to dinosaur dig sites 
and asking, have you, Mr. Dinosaur Paleontologist, have you ever found a modern appearing animal at your uh, dig site, a modern animal? And they'd always say no. And I'd say, well, huh, well, I don't know how to make, how to bring this all together. We'd go from site to site to site and We'd say, have you found any modern animals mixed with the dinosaurs that you're digging up? No, 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 no. Then I thought about it and I asked the question differently. I said, have you found any animals that kind of look like modern animals next to the dinosaurs? Oh, yes. We found a duck next to a dinosaur. D did, did he say duck? Uh, oh, yeah. We found a, an iguana next to a dinosaur. We found a boa constrictor next to a dinosaur. We found a box turtle. We found a possum. We found, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. And what I realized was that the evolution scientists had created the illusion of evolution. And the way they did that is, first of all, they didn't display the modern animals with the dinosaurs. Has anyone ever seen a dinosaur display with a duck flying or sitting on the back of a T-Rex? or a boa constrictor wrapped around a T-Rex's leg, you know, or a flamingo next to a, a stegosaurus. No, see, this is a fraudulent presentation of the facts because all those animals did live with dinosaurs. They've been found with the dinosaurs. And what they, the way they got away with it, and you can see this in my book, Living Fossils, and in the beautiful video that we shot on the Great Barrier Reef, is they simply changed the species name They'd have two animals that would you'd set the, the fossil next to the living animal, maybe a starfish and a starfish, or a crawfish and a crawfish, or a lobster and a lobster. And you set them next to each other on the same page or in the same frame of the video. They look like this exact same animal. And they were found, the fossil one was found next to the dinosaurs. And yet they name them a completely different genus group, which is that is bogus. And when you, okay, one is, one is okay, make a mistake. But the whole field, that's what they've done with the whole field. Every plant, every animal, when, when they find modern appearing animals, they don't call it um, a possum, they call it something else. When they don't, they don't call it a starfish, the starfish, they call it, you know, some other genus group. And so if you're just reading about it, never comparing photos with fossils of modern animals with the fossils found with dinosaurs, you would never get it. <laughs> but that's interesting. That's really, that's really amazing. Um, so your the whole book is dedicated to these sorts of findings. Is that? Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Every page. I don't know if I have it here. I don't have it handy here, but every page. Okay. You open it up. Okay. So here's a dinosaur that was found near it or the kind of a dinosaur. Here's a dinosaur. Here's a fossil found in that layer. And it looks like a, you know, uh, like a rose bush or something. And then here's the picture of the modern flower. And so every page you turn it, it's very simple to read. It only takes an hour, you know. Here's the fossil, here's the living animal, here's the dinosaur. And then you all of a sudden you realize these guys have basically hid these, hid the fact that the modern animals were living with the dinosaurs, which is what you would expect with the Garden of Eden scenario, you know, that you would find yeah, yeah. those animals. I mean this completely debunks um, the evolutionary time frames too, because dinosaurs supposedly went extinct 65 million years ago. That's and then right. all these other creatures evolved far later. And so uh, this is not information that somebody who's a proponent of evolution is going to be like, whoa, no, 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 this can't be um, because everything just completely falls apart. Um, completely. So falls we've apart. already started to see this with, with the fact that they're finding, you know, dinosaur blood in, inside uh, yes. non-fossilized bones and these sorts of things. So I'm just curious from your experience, you know, as you're releasing these books and, so, and these sorts of things, um, what are your thoughts about uh, how this is going to impact? Because, you know, there's been a lot of stuff that's been debunked about evolution over time. And the question is, is what kind of impact are your findings going to have on, you know, public high school education or, you know, the, the uh, textbooks, the science textbooks that are coming out now and uh, the university classrooms. I was blown away. I had a student call me uh, or, or message me from Baylor University saying that they were still teaching in her science class that um, the Miller-Urey experiment demonstrated that life can come from non-life, which I was just astonished that that was being taught at a Christian university in the science classroom, something that has been completely debunked. And yet there it is. 
Um, how do you feel about that in regards to, uh, uh, is this actually going to make, um, I know it makes a difference. So, but how big of an impact are these findings? Do you anticipate this, this having? Well, it depends on your listeners uh, because I've done the work, but I live under a rock. You know, I'm not on social media. I have, you know, I'm very isolated. I, you know, I just, I just, it's just me and my wife, we go play golf, you know, and I don't, I don't, I'm not connected. I could try to do various things, get press releases, which we have all done that. But no, the it's a lockdown from above, you know, like no national press picked up my story about the 150 frauds, which is astounding, you know. Yeah. So it's going to have to come from your listeners, the body of Christ, anybody who has a penchant for truth and shouting from the mouse housetop roofs, uh, getting on social media, talking to your friends, showing them the books. It, 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 no, it starts with us. It, it doesn't start with the national media. I, I hope they, they would have done it, but they didn't. So now it's back to us. You know, you have hundreds and hundreds of listeners. Just imagine if everybody gets this message and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to go get that book. And I'm going to show the living fossils argument to anybody that listen and I'll talk about it on social media and you you know talking about it on your radio program and so it, it's going to go slow it's going to be um it, it's going to be a, a dog fight and this isn't the first time this happened where a big theory has gone down this happened with spontaneous generation in 1859 it happened mm -hmm. with you know different different things it just it takes decades and decades you know Galileo and Copernicus they had a hundred years trying to convince the world that, you know, that the earth wasn't the center of the universe. It's just going to take, it's going to be a dog fight and everybody listening, I'm just putting this on your lap. You know, I can't do any more. you got to do it. you got to pick it up, watch a video and then go show it to your grandkid, show it to your teacher, show, ask your church to play it. I don't know what you, creative way you would do it, but it, it, it's, it's us. It's nobody else. It's just the 500 of us, you know, we, we got to do it together. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. If you're listening and um, you like what you're hearing, thegrandexperiment.com, Dr. Werner, uh, he's got uh, a bunch of books and a video series on this, right? If you don't like to read, you can watch the videos, but just an uh, incredible wealth of information that honestly, you're not going to get, um, I, as far as I know, anywhere else. So uh, this is a wonderful opportunity. And these are great ways to segue into the gospel, honestly. Um, you know, you take some of this information and it can crack the door of a person's heart. Uh, and Dr. Werner, your own story is a testament to that, that this guy just happened to have this brief conversation with you and it just transformed your life. And then through that, God has used um, your transformed life in order to impact uh, thousands, if not millions down the road. So uh, what an incredible um, opportunity, thegrandexperiment.com. And uh, Dr. Werner, we're just about out of time, but um, I would love to have you on again in the future because uh, this there's just so much to talk about. I mean, we just we just did a uh, you know a flyover here real quick, but um, there are so many details I think that are really interesting to talk about. Oh, I would love to come back and share some. You know, like I said, we only did four of the frauds. I think that was to my. I'd love to share twenty or thirty more on a show with you if you if you had the stomach for that. And, um, and by the way, I'll just give you a little teaser if we come back, you know, is, you know, the, the pig tooth, uh, yeah, Nebraska, Nebraska man. man. Yeah. You know, that wasn't a mistake. That was a knowing purposeful fraud. And I got the goods on that. So oh, I'll, I'll, sign off on, I'll sign off on that and, and you can, you can chew on that till, till I yeah, get yeah, back. Yeah. Well, well, I'm going to invite you back. So <laughs> this is, this is amazing stuff. And I'm going to, I'm going to buy your stuff too, because um, I am an apologetics teacher. So I teach 12th grade students and we cover uh, the, the fossil record, but um, not in any, uh, anywhere near the detail that you've uh, just uh, shared with us that you have um, dug up. So that's awesome. You'll have so much fun with your students showing them the videos and, um, you know, uh, the videos, these videos cost a buttload of money to make. And, uh, you know, like 
the one on living fossils. We went to the barrier reef, went to the rainforest. We went, we had to go to all these places. I had to dive in Mexico and it's, you know, so enjoy the fruit of our labor because um, it will make a pleasant experience for your kids or your students, adult students. And um, you guys will have so much fun just coming along. I say coming along on my grand experiment because that's basically what you're doing. And um, it just, yeah, you'll be connected. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much uh, for all the effort you put into this. Um, it is well worth it. Um, I know that God is going to use it in a massive way. He already has, and I know he'll continue to do so. So thank you so much for this evening, Dr. Werner. I really appreciate your time. You know, I just want other plug is if, if there wasn't these ministries like yours, uh, I'd be dead in the water. You know, if the national media doesn't pick it up, how would I get this? How would I get this out? You know, so it's like all these ministries the, that have podcasts and, and, you know, YouTube and live stream events and stuff like that. Okay, maybe you're only hitting 500,000 people at a time, but you eventually will hit a lot of people. And if, can you imagine if there were no Christians standing up and saying, let's do a podcast and we'll cover all the topics like you guys do. So anybody listening, you need to send these guys some money uh, for their ministry because it costs them expensive money, you know, to, to buy their equipment and all this work. So, you know, we are very dependent on, on, on this program here. So I am, let me just say that. So that, that's my last uh, soapbox. Thanks. I appreciate it. From, from, from one bald guy to another. <laughs> Thank you. Bald guys and, dominate. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. And, uh, you know, it's the body of Christ working together. That's what the Lord does all around the world. He's doing it constantly through the Holy Spirit. And uh, we're just so grateful for what Christ has done for us. And I and, uh, just want to share the good news. Um, so if you're listening, again, Dr. Werner, thegrandexperiment.com. My website is educateforlife.org. All kinds of resources on there for you to use. Uh, if you've got a co-op, homeschool co-op, or a home fellowship, or uh, whatever it is, a, a group that wants to uh, grow confident in their faith, um, educateforlife.org, that's my website. And I uh, really appreciate you listening to us and uh, taking the time to be with us. We're going to have another fantastic interview coming up. Uh, we've got a whole bunch lined up that are just incredible. So hope you'll join us next time. And in the meantime, have a great evening and have a great week. God bless you. When you need tires or service, count on Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service in Oceanside for a full range of affordable options in all the brands you trust. See their great customer reviews and special offers online. Hours Tuesday through Friday, 730 to 530, and Saturdays, 730 to 5. Call Dan and his team at 760-439-1631. Conover Tires, Wheels, and Service, 2405 Oceanside Boulevard in Oceanside, 760-439-1631. How can you live? in San Diego and miss out on enjoying the water. Fast Lane Kayaking sells popular Hobie Cat kayaks that you pedal, not paddle. That means your hands are left free for fishing and fun. Just throw these on your roof rack. They're light and they're easy to use and maintain. Just rinse them off. Try one free on a demo ride. For 36 years, Ron and Debbie Lane have served San Diego with fun, family-friendly water sports of all kinds. Learn more. FastLaneSailing.com. 619 619- 222-0766. Hi, this is Jason Hall, president of Team Home Loans, a branch of Synergy One Lending. I just want to take this opportunity to thank Kevin Conover for the profound impact he's had on mine and my wife's spiritual life, as well as being an incredible teacher while our kids were his students. His knowledge and passion have taught us all how important it is to be defenders of our faith. It's our honor and privilege to support Kevin and his show. It is our sincere hope and prayer that you will continue to learn to be defenders of your faith through Kevin radio show and through his educate for life teachings thank you kevin from the hall family and team home loans educate for life helps you build your life on the rock lg equipment helps builders build on good soil luke gibson's team at lg equipment is your local source for grading demolition hauling and more learn about their bulk water services from trucks to tankers to towers at rentwatertower.com get your questions answered call lg equipment at 619-988-0924 learn more at lgequipment.com 619-988-0924 